can check your connections. Already, Dr. Darren? Yes. All right. Okay. Um, good morning to all of you. I am delighted to share with you the results of my work. So, um, this is our result, uh, results for over 13 years. My study on the cellular and molecular interaction of an insect vector with a bad pathogen of corn. And um, to this day, our research efforts are geared towards developing crop protection products targeting the insect, uh, the insect vector. Specifically, the receptors, which are proteins that interact with the uh, viral spike protein, proteins. But um, I'm, a, I'm not a taxonomist, so if you have questions about um, the true hoppers or bugs that I will be showing you, you can just refer your question to Sharon. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so um, my talk are subdivided into three major parts. First is about the insect vectors of plant pathogens in the suborder of Conerica, highlighting, of course, the cornflat hopper Bergerinus matis. Next is the interaction of this insect vector with the viral corn pathogen, maize mosaic rhabdovirus. And I will be discussing a bit about the rhabdovirus family and the viral genome. Finally, I will be sharing with you the results of our work on understanding the disease transmission cycle with a focus on using modern, uh, modern molecular biology tools and its application for tar targeting the receptors of EMATIS that, uh, that is interacting with the uh, glycoprotein of mesosic virus. So most of the important plant pathogens are transmitted by insects in the order Hemiptera. The Oconerica suborder of the Hemiptera contains the familiar members of what was called the homoptera, groups such as cicadas, leaf hoppers, tree hoppers, and plant hoppers. In 2018, Charles Bartlett applied a common name or term true hoppers as shorthand for those that I mentioned as a parallel appellation for true box, commonly, uh, commonly used for heteroptera. So along with the heteroptera, or true bugs, we have the suborders, the Norinca, such as aphids, scale insects, silence. They can also transmit plant pathogens. Uh, the true hoppers, that includes the two lineages, the cicatomorpha, uh, includes the cicadas, leaf hoppers, tree hoppers, beetle bugs, and uh, phylogomorpha, plant hoppers. So the true hoppers are especially important as vectors of plant pathogens. And this phylogenetic analysis shown here was based on protein coding genes of 49 hemipterans, but um, there are more recent studies as we have seen uh, from the previous talks, and this is, um, some of these works are done by Christopher and his group, and uh, shown here is, uh, shown here are uh, some of the works using transcriptome sequencing, and um, these studies are very important because the phylogenetic and ecological structure of the insect hosts communities play a very important role in plant disease dynamics. So there are different types of plant pathogens that can be transmitted by um, plant hoppers, and some of these pathogens are viruses, phytoplasmas, fireplasmas, and bacteria. Of course, number one in my list is Peregrinus matis, which are um, commonly known as corn plant hopper, but here in the Philippines, another plant hopper is, is um, uh, known, and it is Tenocrinus uh, pacificus. But um, I wanted to, to say that uh, Tenocrinus pacificus in, um, in Japan or in Indonesia, they call this hopper as white belly plant hopper. So I would suggest also that here in the Philippines, we use white belly plant hopper hopper for um, stem crack specific plus. And one important um, hopper here is the sugarcane plant hopper, Perkinsella, and I, I've seen in one of the posters that is considered as an alien species in Japan. Now, Pimedes is widespread throughout most tropical and subtropical regions, including Southern North America, South America, Africa, Africa Australia, Southeast Asia, and China and they are a common pest of corn. And um, in a, uh, addition to the physical, physical plant damage, 
It is a vector of several species-specific maize viruses, including maize tripe virus, maize mosaic, and the non-pathogenic Bergen's maize uh, real virus. Um, uh, in temperate countries, pea maize has five new fall stages, but here in the Philippines, there are only four. And maize mosaic virus can be acquired by pea maize in the lympho or adult stages, but it is not transmitted from parent to offspring. And in juvenile and star stage can become infected, but the virus has a three-week latency period before it can be transmitted to another plant. Therefore, usually only adults are able to pass the infection onto a healthy plant. Um, Macroptors adults dispersing to a new plant actively avoid plants that are showing symptoms of MMV infection. These adults demonstrate a preference for asymptomatic plants. They are most likely responding to a cue about the quality of the host plant. Um, Pimedes also demonstrates sexual dimorphism. Uh, usually the males have smaller body size compared with the females. And uh, the species is mainly yellow with dark brown to black markings, but coloration ranges from greenish yellow to brownish yellow. And um, the hind tibia possess multiple spines and a large human bone spore. And they are, of course, flawed feathers. Similar to other plant hoppers, Pimedes has sucking mouth parts with stylets that can obtain nutrients and deposit salivary secretions. Now, uh, the virus, maize mosaic virus that uh, Pimedes transmits, belongs to the Rhabdoviridae family. And these Rhabdoviruses have negative sense single stranded RNA genomes, which range from 10.8 to 16.1 kilobases. And this Rhabdoviridae is a very has a very diverse family of um, negative strand RNA viruses that can infect vertebrates, invertebrates, and plants. So you can see here that rabies virus is in the same family as maize mosaic. Um, so uh, you see here the picture of a negative contrast electron micrograph of a vesicular stomatitis indiana virus particles. And this is the virus that infects um, uh, big animals like uh, um, cows, goats, sheep. Uh, the genome of plant rhabdovirus, rhabdoviruses consists of 3' prime leader and 5' prime trailer sequences. And there are five, non, uh, five viral structural proteins, protein genes that is organized in the order of, uh, as you see here, uh, N for the encapsulation of the genome, P protein, 3, M, G, and L. And uh, the genomic RNA is complementary to its messenger RNA. However, it requires a minimal infectious unit consisting of the genomic RNA, the N, the P, and the L proteins for initiation, initiation of virus transcription and um, replication. Uh, so plant, plants that are infected with maize mosaic virus are stunted, and either the cobs, the cobs do not develop or they are deformed, with fewer seeds than normal, and um, if the if the disease is not uh, treated, uh, they they can cause about 90 to 90 percent loss in um, crop yield. Also, some of the reported hosts for MMV are sorghum and each grass. Now, um, plant hosts that are infected with MMV that show symptoms as shown in the previous slide, but they're also um, uh, but the, the virus is not uh, pathogenic to the, to the insect host, so you cannot see pathogenic symptoms in the insect compared to the plants. So this is uh, true for many insects, uh, insect vectors transmitting plant viruses in the persistent propagative manner. And a consistent feature is that the interaction of the virus with its uh, insect host or the vector requires specific molecular interactions between the virus and the host, commonly via proteins. So understanding the interactions between plant viruses and their insect host can underpin approaches to protect plants from infection by interfering with virus uptake and transmission. MMV replicates in the insect vector and it reaches the 
salivary gland either by hemolympha or urinopic crowd. Either way, the virus must escape the mid-gut barriers to be able to be transmitted in a new plant host through feeding. Now, once the this uh, acquires MMP, it can remain virulent for life. So we know that MMP can be detected one week post first access to plants that is infected with MMP. So what you see here, what you see here is a very good picture, confocal uh, micrograph of um, uh, the progress of uh, the viral uh, the virus inside uh, inside the pinnitus. So first uh, first week you will be able to see um, infection in the mid gut and the anter anterior the verticulum. And then the second week after exposure to uh, MMP infected plants, the esophagus, nerves, their ganglia and visceral muscles are already infected. And three weeks after, you have the hemocytes, trachea, salivary glands, and other tissues. And so based on this work, we can say that um, MMP, uh, since it, it uh, infects or can be seen more in the nerves and, and um, the thinness of the insect, we, uh, we can say that PMEDIS really uh, follows also the neuro, uh, MMV follows the neurotropic, neurotropic route in PMEDIS. So following oral acquisition of MMV, the virus moves from the anterior part of the mid gut to the anterior the verticulum and the esophagus and from this to the compound ganglion, then through nerves to the principal salivary glands. Now, to better understand the vectorial capacity of PMATIS, we determine the efficiency of MMV acquisition by lympho and adult stages and characterize MMV titer through development. Acquisition efficiency, that is, the proportion of insects that acquired the virus. This was determined by reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction or RT-PCR and virus titer of individual insects were estimated by quantitative um, RT-PCR. So acquisition efficiency of MMV, MMV differed significantly between NIMS and adults. So you can see here that NIMS better acquire the virus than the adults, but once it is acquired, the titer increases as the insect um, matures. Also, the average titer in male insects was threefold higher than female titers, and this difference persisted up to 30 days post adult eclosion. Overall, from this find findings, it indicates that nymphs are more efficient than adults at the current MMP, and the virus accumulates in the vector over the course of info development. And uh, furthermore, Sustained infection over the lifespan of PMATIS indicates a potentially high capacity of this vector to transmit MMV. And in another work, we performed RNA seq analysis and de novo assembly of the Bergerinus medius transcriptome, and we generated about 68,000 transcripts. But um, MMV infection altered expression of 144 transcripts only. And this is a very small percentage of the transcriptome, but uh, we show that there are several transcripts that are either upregulated or downregulated in response to MMV infection. From the transcriptome, transcriptome also, we show the gene expression of the genes in MMV in um, the whole bodies of Regrans Matis. And you can see here that most of uh, uh, N or the P genes are the most expressed genes in, in MMV. So despite the positive correlation pattern of viral titer in the insect as it develops to adult, MMV does not affect wing polyphenism in pinnatus. The virus does not affect fecundity but does uh, show an effect on the feeding behavior based on the rate of probing and salivary sheets. Now, um, I did not show it here, but what we found is that um, insects that are injected with the virus would show most number of probing in the leaves, 
and most number of um, salivary, watery saliva. <coughs> we know that uh, PNADES transmits the plant virus in a persistent and propagated manner. And when we compare other insect vectors, we know that virus interactions with these vectors are diverse, but there are some commonalities. So the plant viruses rely on their uh, vectors for breaching uh, the plant cell wall to be delivered directly onto the cytosol. In most cases, it is the viral capsid or the membrane glycoproteins that are the specific viral proteins that are required for transmission and determinants of vector specificity. So here are some of the examples of uh, some strategies used to disrupt plant virus vector interaction. And for plant hoppers on the list, the disruption strategy involves blocking the virus entry into the vector using a viral protein targeting the vector proteins. And some of the methods used were um, uh, modern biotech tools like RNA interference. Now, RNA interference can be used for gene regulation and plant resistance to insect pests. Here you see a graphic representation of RNAi delivery strategies. And this is the RNA mechanism and the challenges affecting RNA efficiency in Hemiptera. So some of the common methods or um, car protection products that are being developed right now is based on Higgs or SIGS. Higgs is um, host-induced gene silencing and another one is spray-induced gene silencing or SIGS. So here we tried also RNAi and we made this and we targeted two uh, ATPases, vascular ATPases, and we know that the ATPases are essential genes for hydrolysis of ATP and for transport of protons out of cells, thereby maintaining um, uh, membrane ion balance, and it has been demonstrated to be an efficacious target for RNAi in other insects as well. So you see here that when we map down the ATPase B and the ATPase V, ATPase D, percent mortality uh, uh, increased in PMATIS compared with the control uh, GFP. And you, you see here the effect of RNAi uh, on uh, the female reproductive organs. So uh, the ovaries of, of the female adults injected with double-stranded RNA targeting base B or D would have this um, deformed ovaries and they are full of fat tissues compared with the control. And also when we observe the uh, uh, wings, there are deformed wings for, for the insects that are injected with V8 base B or D. And uh, we look further into the uh, interactome of B mavis and maize mosaic glycoprotein. So what you see here are some of the um, uh, proteins that we found to be interacting with uh, the maize mosaic uh, spike protein. Uh, this, this shows the physical interactions between images only and MFVG, but this one is based on the database from um, Drosophila melanogaster. And there were some non-annotated images sequences and we analyzed the, the sequences based on the uh, linear motifs and we found that there are several um, motifs in this un annotated genes that can be uh, very interesting to look at because they are involved in binding with the uh, spike protein. And to study further the proteins we identified from the previous work, we move on in the construction of recombinant expression vectors for transfection in, in six cells. And on the left, you can see here the viral spike protein that is uh, produced in a GFP protein expression vector. And we have transformed um, several um, insect vector proteins and tagged it with a red or RFP expression vector. And the transfection of this recombinant um, uh, protein constructs were done using S2 or SF9 cell lines. And what you see here are localization of MMVG with uh, the proteins that we chose based on the, the yeast 2 hybrid assay. And uh, highlighting apolypopherin and cyclophilin. 
Yes, that's cyclophilin. So we uh, further uh, did co localization and we proved that they are they are can be seen in, in some uh, parts of the cell other than the uh, nucleus. So for verifi uh, verification, we perform co precipitation of uh, cyclophilin um, and apolipoferin, and um, uh, this. Uh, shows that MMVG, the spike protein, co amino precipitated with cyclophilin and apolipoferin, uh, proving that they are really interacting. So, uh, there are other works that uh, use the same methods as we did. And um, to better understand uh, this, this potential receptors, uh, we performed real time PCR um, uh, experiments and we found that. One of the genes, syntaxin 18, is upregulated, uh, and uh, and another one is a Rev2. But interestingly, apolipoferin is downregulated when it when the insect is um, infected with the virus. So we look at um, the interaction of syntaxin and MMV. We performed in silico analysis and showed the specific amino acids interacting between these two. Proteins, and we also analyzed the expression pattern of of syntaxin 18 across the developmental stages, and we found that syntaxin is mostly expressed at the first nympho stage and fourth nympho stage, and it is sustained in the adult stage. And I uh, just want to show you here the current research initiatives in the Pinedes and the Vipacta system. Recently, um, Patel's group. Uh, uh, first reported the uh, transgenic transgenic pimidis, and they used uh, CRISPR Cas9 um, technology to do the, uh, to do this. And another one is the uh, the production of the uh, first negative strand RNA virus vector for corn that is constructed using an infectious clone of the uh, maize infecting MMV. So my takeaway messages, uh, first this PMADIS MMV path system is a model system for studying circulated propagated plant viruses in the insect vectors in identification of host proteins interacting with the glycoprotein provides new knowledge about the rhabdovirus vector interactome which can be further investigated towards developing RNAi-based technology products for reducing virus transmission or controlling the highly destructive corn plant upper, and the recent development of an infectious clone for MMV and genome editing technologies for PMADES will enable further characterization of tissue-specific interactions between the virus and vector. Uh, finally, I would uh, to thank um, my present and uh, previous lab members for all this work. Thank you very much.